Hi, I'm Jillian. Thank you for joining me. There are many comprehensive resources on constructing a thesis. You are not going to have trouble finding them on YouTube or on the websites of higher education institutions. This video is not that. This is meant to be a cheat sheet or maybe a checklist. So it doesn't contain all the details that you'll find elsewhere, just the key concepts that you want to consider for each chapter of your thesis. My own experience is with qualitative research. And while I believe this video will also be relevant to quantitative research, I don't want to presume. So I will leave it to you to transfer what's useful to the quantitative setting. A tip before we get going. Don't save this cheat sheet for the end when you're already writing up your thesis. Consult it while you're conducting your study because knowing what the end product should be will help you build in the necessary pieces to your design right from the start and as you go along. Let's dive in. Typical theses have five chapters, introduction, literature review, methodology, results or findings, and discussion and conclusions. But you can vary this structure. For example, my literature review was two chapters long. The first was a traditional literature review and the second was more analytic. My results were also two chapters because there were two major themes that emerged from my data and they both needed space to be fully explored. And some people split the discussion and conclusions into two chapters. Also, this is the typical ordering of the chapters, but I saw a thesis that reversed the literature review and the methodology chapters. So you can modify this structure if you feel there is a better way to represent your research. The important thing is to rationalize or justify the decisions you make. It should be clear why you have seven chapters, for example, or why methodology is chapter two and not chapter three. Let's have a look at each chapter. In the introductory chapter, you want to orient the reader to the substance of your work, to what's coming, what they can expect. And in doing that, you foreshadow subsequent chapters. So start by establishing the topic and context. Context may be physical, like a specific geographical location or locations, specific sites, schools, community centers, businesses, forests, and or particular time periods. Context is also theoretical, including the theories and or key concepts from the literature that define your topic. Establishing the physical and theoretical context signals the scope and scale of your study. It sets boundaries around your work, what is included, what is not included, and it clues the reader into the body of literature that you'll be reviewing in a subsequent chapter. In other words, it brings the reader into the world of your study. Provide definitions for the terms and concepts that cut across the entire thesis, things that readers need to know right off the top. Other definitions can wait until they become relevant. The problem or gap in the literature, the study's purpose, the study's main research question, and the study's methodology and methods flow one from the other and usually in that order. And they must align for your report and your study to be cohesive and coherent. So here's how that happens. You will identify a problem or a gap in the literature where you perceive an opportunity for study. So what is still unknown or unclear? In the literature review chapter, you will delve deeply into the literature and provide loads of evidence to support your claim about this gap or problem. Then declare the purpose of your study as it addresses this problem or gap and is positioned to make a contribution to the literature. State your main research question, which guides your study and in fulfilling this purpose. That question dictates your methodology or your methodological approach and the specific methods you use. How type questions are qualitative in nature and they may indicate a case study or an ethnography, for example. Or you might ask a question that is quantitative and would indicate or would indicate mixed methods. All of this is detailed in the methodology chapter. So again, you're just foreshadowing here. Something that is particularly significant in qualitative research. It's often helpful for readers to know where you as the researcher are coming from, your motivation and interest in pursuing the topic and the personal perspectives, assumptions and biases you hold. 
These might influence how you collect and interpret data. So it's best to be upfront with who you are, where you think it's relevant. Finally, some introductory chapters will end with a roadmap of, of sorts, which introduces each of the chapters that will follow. This will be particularly helpful if you have more than five chapters and or you've changed the typical ordering of them. It's an opportunity for you to explain why you chose a particular structure for your thesis. In the introductory chapter, you introduce the literature relevant to your topic and identified a problem or gap in that literature, which your study will address. In this chapter, you're going to convince the reader that the problem or gap exists and is important and worthy of study. To do so, you will provide an analytic summary of the relevant scholarship, the theoretical, conceptual, philosophical, and empirical work, whatever there is on your topic. How you organize all of that reflects how you are interpreting the scholarship on your topic. So it's an opportunity to show your understanding and interpretations. You'll need to determine a framework for this review. It could be geographical, chronological, thematic, or according to the type of scholarly work, for example, theoretical, conceptual, or empirical, whatever makes sense for the literature and your study. If you leave out some existing scholarly work from this review, make sure that decision is consistent with the boundaries you established in the introduction or rationalize why it's not included here. It cannot be a random decision to pick and choose what literature you use, since that can bias your study and undermine its value. Again, let readers know how and why you made the decisions you did. Once you've thoroughly represented the literature, restate the problem or gap that you identified in the introductory chapter and rationalize in a more comprehensive way the purpose of your study or how your study will address this problem or gap. Declare all your research questions. Note that in the introduction, you may have only identified your main question. Here, you would present your sub-questions as well, if you have any. You might find my video on nine steps for creating a literature review paper and my video on where do research questions come from helpful. You introduced your methodological approach and methods in the introduction and align them with the problem or gap, the purpose and your research questions. Here, you're going to expand on that by detailing every aspect of your study, leaving no doubt in the reader's mind as to what you did and enabling others to repeat your study or adopt and adapt it to suit different contexts and needs. Remind the reader of your methodological or theoretical approach. Depending on your design, you will include how you sourced your participants, accessed the research field, collected data, and analyzed data. Any protocols you used or created, such as for interviews and observations, you will explain them here and include the actual protocol in the appendices. Describe how you ensured your study was conducted in ethical ways and in accordance with your institution's ethical guidelines. Any correspondence regarding this would also be included in the appendices, but likely without identifying features such as names. You will also acknowledge the limitations of your study. All studies, all methodologies, all methods, all researchers have limitations. So own them and explain how you ensured that despite these limitations, your study is still rigorous and trustworthy. Relatedly, you made countless decisions regarding the methodology and methods, sometimes even on the fly while you were in the field, and you likely faced challenges at various stages. Be upfront and honest about them and justify why and how you made decisions. What were the outcomes, both good and bad? The areas where your study may have fallen short provide opportunities for other researchers and further study. In order to rationalize the choices and decisions you made in designing and enacting the study, tap into the body of literature on research theory. This chapter should contain many citations to that body of literature. In this chapter, you will present your results or findings. Converting raw data to results is an analytic process. 
For qualitative research, you usually use either inductive or deductive reasoning. With inductive reasoning, you let the data speak to you. What is your data revealing? What are the main ideas or themes that emerge? What are the sub-ideas or sub-themes? With deductive reasoning, you predetermine what the ideas and themes will be, usually from the literature, and you organize your data accordingly. Which reasoning process you use is determined by your research questions, your methodology, and what makes sense for the literature in which your study is situated. For example, deductive reasoning might be used with a body of literature that is very well theorized. If your body of literature isn't that well theorized, inductive reasoning might make more sense. As part of this analysis, you will determine a framework for presenting the results. The framework may or may not relate to the framework you use to present the literature in the literature review chapter. This is particularly true for inductive reasoning. This chapter is also where you add visuals like charts, graphs, diagrams, photographs, and drawings to illustrate the text. Don't forget about unexpected or deviating data and results that may seem like outliers or artifacts of the research process. Come clean on them. They could lead to fresh insights, be important, or be warning signs for other researchers. Readers are counting on your honesty across the board. You might find my video on four activities for analysis of qualitative data helpful for developing the content for this chapter. In this final chapter, you will interpret your results to determine key insights and their implications, significance, and contributions. Way back in the introductory chapter, and again in the literature review, you identified a problem or gap in the literature, and you promised that your study would help address it. It's now time to own that promise. This is what I like to call the so what, who cares part of your report. Put your results back into the context of the literature and make your contribution. Do your results close the gap, solve the problem, how? Or do they make a different contribution? Sometimes results can actually widen the gap with ideas or connections that were not previously realized or addressed. It's your job as the researcher to dig deep and figure this out, to connect all the dots. Speaking of figuring things out, you likely also want to revisit the limitations you identified in the methodology chapter and any unexpected or deviating results from the results or findings chapter. By interpreting and explaining their significance, do they impact the contributions of your study? How so? Finally, now that you are an expert in this field, make some recommendations on where we go from here. What additional or continuing work should be conducted? Where do gaps still exist? Other researchers often look for research ideas from existing studies. You may have done that yourself. So close your thesis in a way that is satisfying in its completion, yet stimulates ongoing interest. A brief word on the abstract, which is the one to three paragraph description of your thesis that comes at the beginning. This is what people who are searching databases for resources will use to know if your study is relevant to their work. So you want to nail it. I approach it by sampling key points from each of the chapters. Obviously, then, you write this after everything else is well drafted. From the introduction, state the topic and the context. From the literature review, state the main themes or ideas presented by the scholars. Maybe that's the headings of your chapter. Identify the problem you're addressing and your main research question. From methodology, note your methodological or theoretical approach and maybe say something about participants, the research context, and or your methods. From results or findings, note the main themes. Again, this might be your headings. And from discussion and conclusions, identify the main insights and the contribution your study makes to the literature as it relates to the problem you identified. So come full circle. So that's my overall approach to constructing a qualitative research thesis. Hopefully some of it will also be helpful with quantitative and mixed methods studies. If I missed anything, please leave me a note and feel free to contact me for clarification. 
As you write and polish your thesis, you might find my video on five pitfalls to avoid in academic writing helpful. So happy writing and good luck.